Right, hello to everyone who's uh, joined us in Zoom. Thank you for joining us. I'm just going to get us set up on Facebook and then we will get going. Right, we are live on Facebook. So hi everyone and thanks for joining us. Um, so I'm Eve Oxbury, I'm Head of Editorial at Professional Beauty and uh, today's Professional Beauty webinar is um, well, less of a classic webinar and more of a, a demo session. Um, the title is Autumnal Abstract Nail Art Designs and I'm very happy to be joined by Kaylee Cairns. Hi Kaylee. Hiya. So Kaylee, as many of you will know, is a fab nail artist, um, educator, competition winner, and of course the winner of Professional Beauty's Nail Professional of the Year Award 2019. So yeah, Kaylee is going to give us a bit of a demo of some on-trend abstract autumn nail art designs, which will be very cool. Um, we will get going in just a sec, but if you do have any questions for Kaylee as we go along, if you're watching in Zoom, just type them in the chat box. And if you're watching over on our Facebook page live, then do just type them in the comments and we will get them answered at the end. So yeah, Kaylee, if you want to set up your uh, camera, yeah. okay, we will get going. All right, so bear with me just a moment while I settle it down. I'll try and get it in the right shot. So with the designs that I've done, I've actually put them as a as a set, so you can get an idea of what we're going to do. You know how you might dress it up with um, a full set of nails. How's that in shot, Eve? Am that I... is looking pretty good to me. I think we've got everything in. I can see almost the whole palette. Just the little top part of the palette is not in view. That's so fine. So if I work thing. about here. Okay, yeah, that all looks in shot. Okay, perfect. Excellent. So yeah. I will turn off my camera so people can just see you and I will come back in at the end, but I'll give you a, I'll keep an eye and give you a shout if anything. Uh, yeah, no problem. Just <laughs> obviously give me a shout if I'm out of shot. Okay, and do. if anybody has any questions as we go, as Eve says, please do pop them in the comment section of the box wherever it goes and I'll hang around after and we can answer any questions you've got. So I'm going to start with this one, which is um, a nice variable abstract, really. I've picked this one because depending on the colours that you use, it's something that can be tweaked for any time of the year. Abstract is something I'm absolutely loving at the moment. My clients are loving it. And it's really popular and salon easy, which is what we kind of really want at the end of the day, something that we can recreate fairly easily in salon. So I've already prepped this tip with one layer of a nude gel polish. Um, on the design, it's got a nude background that is going to be partially shown. Um, so I'm going to do a second layer of that. So I'm using Luxio in Audacious, just working on a little platform. So bear with me if I seem a little awkward at some polishing. Just getting used to working in this space. So this is Luxio Audacious, which is actually what I'm also wearing on my own nails. So a little bit of fluff has got in there. Let's see if I don't. Hopefully that's, if it's not out, it doesn't actually matter on this design because I can hide it in there. <laughs> so that's going in the lamp now for 30 seconds. And while that's in there, I'll just show you my palette here. I've got a selection of colors that I'm gonna use. These are the ones that I've used in the design set here. Um, in addition, I'm going to add, as I have in this one, I don't know if you can see, um, a little bit of glitz in there as well, just to catch the light, really. Um, so I've picked a selection of colours that are going to give me that autumnal feel. So the muted yellows, um, a nice sort of autumny red, orange, 
things like that. Of course, if you wanted to make it summery, I've recently done a set in neons and that looks quite awesome. Um, pretty much anything goes. Just try and use the color palette that complements each other. So if you're gonna go for you know, brights, use all brights. If you're gonna use more muted tones, use all muted tones. Um, so I'm gonna come in now. Actually, I'm gonna make that palette to my right hand side. So I'm gonna just start randomly with any color really. I'm gonna go for this color. This is um, the gel polish that is on the other nails on the set that I've put it in. So it really doesn't have to be difficult and it's just very random. Swipes, it doesn't matter if some are thicker, some are thinner, because ultimately we're gonna go over a lot of these. So if I'm doing it on multiple nails, I'm going to go over do all of this colour for a couple of different nails, however many nails I'm working on, before moving to the next colour. So I'm flash curing in between as well, and it will just stop the colours running into each other, so it will keep them more crisp. So I'm wiping off my brush while that goes. So I'll pick another colour now. Let's go for something a little darker. Nice berry red. And it really is just something that's going to be layered. I'm a bit addicted to this style. I'm doing it a lot lately. But I think abstract anything seems to be very popular. And colour in general, this is something, in fact, a lot of the abstract stuff that I've done is all something that people can wear, even if they don't wear loads of nail art normally, you can really tone it up or tone it down. And um, so if you've got someone that is a little bit more conservative in what they would usually choose to wear, that, you know, they're bored having had no nails for lockdown, you can absolutely go on and give them just a little something. So again, flash curing that, I'm gonna come on to a bit of yellow this time. I love this yellow. I think it's called Dauntless by Luxio. I'm not a massive yellow wearer myself because it just doesn't complement my skin tone. But a more mustardy tone, I'd absolutely consider. And you can see how it starts changing the look of it as we add on these more contrasting colours. So again, I'll flash that. So it may seem a little faffy because I'm flashing in between, but when, when you're doing it as part of a set, you're doing a couple of nails at a time, so it actually does get to it a fair bit. Um, if you wanted to, you could go on and repeat the colours in any order. It doesn't actually matter if you want to see a bit more of the red that we started with, that's all fine. I'm going to just bring some of the lines up slightly. If there's colours you don't like, you know, you can include a little less of those. I like this because it's so easy. The hardest part, I think, is, is just picking colours that are going to look okay together. So again, we'll give that a little flash. And to be fair, while it's flashing, I'm just doing my, um, cleaning off my brush at the same time. So now I'm going to add in a little bit of Deep blue or teal colour. I like that it looks different every time actually. I love change and different. So I love that something like this, it's not going to be the same for every client that has it. I think they quite like that too actually. So I'll flash that again. And again, I'm just, I'm just flashing in the middle, really, so that the colours don't blend in and merge to each other. So it'll just freeze cure them in place. For me, it's adding these pops of bright colours, actually, that are quite like in this. Oh. 
just drop the uh, cloth that I'm wiping my brush on. Love that. Right, so I'm going to come in now with a little bit of white. I'm going to do this a little bit thicker because I'm going to add a little bit of pattern in with the white. It, if you liked it as it is, it's not something you'd have to add in. And just that light, almost scratchiness on my brush. I don't want nice, perfect white. A bit here and there. Some bits thicker, some not. So there's some white, and you can see how that's changed the look of it already. I'm going to pop that in the lamp. I'm actually going to let that have a full 30 second cure now because I want to come on and paint directly over that. Um, so in my design, I've got a few little dots going over the white. So once that's cured, I'll pop a couple of those on. And after I've popped those on, then we can look and decide if it needs any more colours anywhere. And add on that little bit of rose gold glitz. The rose gold, depending on the client, their colour preferences and things, I might, you know, change that up for maybe a silver or a gold as well. So I've got a dotting tool now and a little bit of black. And I'm going to come on now. In fact, I just want to make sure they're tiny little dots for this. And just apply some little dots on here. So just over where the white is. Some people prefer them to be in a different place. That's the thing with abstract art is there is no definite. You know, you can take this idea and move things about however suits you. I'll just get some of these little dots on. And I'll pop them in um, while that's in there curing my black. I'm gonna just grab my rose gold. So for the rose gold element, I'm using Accents Gel Play Glitz. I love this because it's a, a really easy to use and not messy um, rose gold. So I'll pop that out. It's not had a full cure for the moment. As it's a demo, I'm sure that won't matter. No one's actually wearing it. So I'll get a little bit of rose gold on here. So you can see what this actually is, is this is rose gold foil in a gel, mixed in with a gel. I mean, there's a few different Mark. a few different brands of these on the market so I'm sure most of you may have already seen this if you haven't definitely get it in for Christmas I use a lot of these kind of products I've got this in so many colours but yeah whatever brand you choose do get something along these lines in for Christmas it just is perfect for nail art so I like adding this on here just because it adds a little bit of a flash it really lifts the design and I'm going to pop that, just a flash cure again in the lamp. I'm going to pop my lid on, clean my brush, and then I'm just going to check and see if I want to add any more of these colours anywhere in here. And I think I want a little bit more of this red to run through here. Not loads. And I'm not sure where. Because I've flash cured it throughout, none of them are running. And let's just do a quick, quick couple of flicks of dark red. Right, I think I'm quite happy with that, and I'm going to pop that in. Actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> I want a little bit more yellow, and then I'll be happy. If you're a faffer like me, it's one of those designs you can go on and on and on with. So I guess learning where to stop is a good place. But just a little bit of yellow, I think. 
is what I'm lacking in that. I can see a lot more orange than I can the yellow. And I really love this. So I want that to run through. I love the yellow and it's contrast with the blue in there. Right, once that's had its full cure, 30 seconds, I'm just going to run on with a top coat for that. So as you can see here, this is how I would style it in a nail design. Um, not necessarily always like this, but whatever colour I've used in there for the client's preference. For example, if my client likes rose gold um, and we're incorporating that on the other nail, I'll use that in there. If she wants uh, silver on another nail, I'll incorporate silver in there. So I'll just change it up. On this particular one, I chose rose gold because I think it pairs lovely with the dark red colour, which is also a Luxio, which is, a, which is what I'm using today. And um, that one's called Rebel. So that's, that's my nail fresh out the lamp. So I'm gonna pop a top coat on that. You can, you, you can also do these in matte. They do look pretty awesome in matte or shiny. Um, I'm going ahead with shiny for this design because the other nails that I have done in that particular set were matte. So I'm using shine on my tack free top coat of choice. And then that's going to pop in the lamp to finish that design. So that's our first abstract look. So pretty easy if you're doing that across two hands in a salon. That's a nice easy one. Um, you can see it's not it's not a difficult design. So staff members can probably recreate that one fairly easily. So as that comes out, I'll pop that on the side and clear this out of the way. All right, so the next design I'm gonna do, we're gonna incorporate a little bit of stamping and a little bit of foiling. All right, so that is our first look. So this is for our second one. I'm gonna go ahead with this one. So again, I've already popped a nude over a nail stick. A nail tip, not a stick. And I'm going to do my second coat of that. Same nude as before, just because it's one I particularly love. This does look quite nice. I like abstract nail art on quite light nudes as well. Right, so I'm going to pop that in, secure for 30 seconds, and I'm going to grab myself some foil. Um, now, depending on brands that you use, some brands do foil easier, some less easy. Um, this one, it's kind of in the middle. Sometimes it goes great, sometimes it doesn't. If I wanted a full nail coverage, I would look at using a foil gel with it. But for this particular one, I just want that sort of distressed not really everywhere kind of foil. So I'm going to go ahead and just hope that it sticks for you guys today. All right. There we go. Thank goodness for that. So a little bit of that on there. Um, I'm only doing one half. I want to add a nice little bulk of colour. In a lot of abstract designs, we see just shapes in nice bold colours on there. That's what I'm going to incorporate on this one. So I'm actually using quite a neon one for this bold, but it's when I know that when I matte it, it will change the tone of it anyway. Let me pop that bowl down. It will change the tone a bit. But I think because we're pairing it with a nude now and a, cut, a more muted colour scheme in general, um, even though it's really bold, it will still fit in with that autumn vibe. And you can see it's a nice orangey red colour, which is perfect for autumn. So that's in there curing in my lamp for 30 seconds. While that's in there, I'm going to grab my nail stamping stuff. Um, there are loads of brands, but my brand of choice is um, Yours Cosmetics. I like their big fat stamper. 
um, and the plate I'm using for this um, is drawing the line it's called so you can see again stamping is a really easy way to make nail art accessible for anybody really and um, for those that aren't as great at it all right so that's come out it needs a matte top coat on it now so I'm going to pop one over the top and then just stick it in the lamp the reason that I am matte top coating it first um, for this particular brand I find that stamping doesn't take if I don't wipe the tacky layer off but if I wipe the tacky layer off I will also take the foil with it so I'm doing a coat in the middle just to protect my foil underneath it so depending on the brand you actually may not have to take this step I use about three different brands and um, I don't have to do it with all of them. Right, so that's going in there. As I say, my stamper of choice for today is um, by Yours Cosmetics. I'm gonna get some kitchen roll under here. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with stamping. Um, so if it doesn't go right first time, it's not unusual, it does happen to me sometimes. Um, I'm gonna use their own stamping polish as well. There are loads on the market that lots of other people use. Um, I sometimes use Creative Play normal nail polish or um, sometimes I might use, um, I think Barry M's quite popular. I don't have any of that, but Barry M's quite popular for stamping. So I'm just gonna make sure while my nail is curing, Going to make sure that there's nothing on my plate in terms of oil or mess. Now you do kind of have to be a little bit swift with stamping sometimes. You'll see when I do it. I probably don't make it look as easy as it actually is, um, but we'll give it a go. Um, so I've got my stamping plate, my squeegee and a card to swipe it with. Um, I've also got a nail form, which I'm going to use to clean this when I'm done. Hopefully it goes first time. So here's my nail matte tip. Place that there for a moment. Everything to hand. We're going to place a little bit of polish on there. Part and you can see it's come through. So now we're going to place it onto the nail. Well, I've got to say, I'm relieved that happened first time because sometimes it doesn't in salon. If it doesn't go right first time, um, there are some absolute whizzes at stamping that will get it right first time every time, I'm sure. But for me, it doesn't. So if it doesn't, um, you can check through the stamper, it's called a jelly stamper, so you can check through that and see the design um, to make sure that it's all picked up. Um, if it's when you put it on the nail that it all goes wrong, maybe it doesn't all transfer or maybe it doesn't pick up, it's fine um, to just wipe it lightly with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, um, clean your stamp off and have another go. So to clean the stamp in between, if you're using it again, we'll take the nail foam off the backing and just use it to clean any stuff off of there. And pop the lid back on that. And that's done. So now this design just needs its top coat. You can see, again, I have matte top coated this. I do absolutely love matte. I do particularly like the contrast between matte and shiny though and I love the way that under a matte top coat the foil reflects. I think it's quite magical looking. So I'm just going to pop on my top coat and then pop that in the lamp. And the only thing with matte top coat is it does show up all the flaws. So do try and make sure that your nail um, surface is nice and smooth. If you've got a bit of a lumpy bumpy nail, I think it's far less forgiving on a matte nail than it is on a shiny one. 
So I think we've been going, what's the time? So while that's in there curing, we'll just whiz through and I'll just do this one real quick because it is a pretty quick design just to talk you through this one. Well, I'm not gonna talk you through it. I'm gonna walk you through it. We're gonna do it together. So again, I'm going on with my nude polish. And I'll pop that in the lamp. I'm gonna again do two layers of that just to make sure it's nice and solid. There we go, so there's our second design. Oops. And you can see how I've dressed both of these ones up together, the one that I'm doing now and the one that I've just done um, using colors from them. complement the rest of the set. So this here is also a stamp as well. From the same plate, it's just a squiggly, a squiggly line one. I was really excited when I saw that stamping plate because they're not difficult to draw squiggly lines and things like that, but if you are a bit of a perfectionist and you want them to match from now to now or hand to hand, um, it's just a really easy way to do intricate nail art without the time that it normally takes. So I'm going to come back to my palette because I've got some of the colours that I want on there. And grab that. So for this one, I've got a nice deep blue that I'll take off the palette. And I've also got my yellow, which is Luxio Dauntless. Um, so I'm going to take the yellow out of the bottle. And don't forget, if you have got any questions, you can just leave them in the comment section, wherever that may be. And we can go through those in a moment. Sorry if my arm's in the way. I'm trying to do it as, as circle as possible. I'm trying not to shake on this little platform. I'm clearly failing a little bit. No, let's get that round. Getting my yellow shape on there. I'm going to flash cure that in the lamp. Just for a moment and for the same reason so that it won't merge in with the blue as I put the blue onto it. The blue that is there, I think this one is, yeah, one I'm going to use called Peacock. Cleaning my brush, make sure I've got nothing on it. I can get some red residue on that. Right, we'll grab a little bit of blue. Strategically placing that blue right over a little bit of red residue that I had off my brush. We'll just make this a little oblong. Pop that in for a cure. And then I'm going to grab my dotting tool again and I'll add these black dots here. So I'm for that to cure. I'll let that flash. So I'm going to use the fatter side of my dotting tool. If you want them all the same shape and size, then you'll keep going back. I'm placing it on there, but if you want them to go smaller in size, then you can use the same dotting tool without redotting. A little bit carried away with dots there, but you get the idea. So that's gonna go for a full cure now. And then I'm gonna matte top coat over it. I don't know if you can see in this set, 
but the white that I've got on here is actually textured. Now, what I've used for that isn't actually a gel polish, it's a gel paint. Um, so it's a tack free art gel. And what that means is it can go straight over the top of the top coat and it won't need top coating itself. You can pop a top coat over it if you'd prefer it not to be raised, um, but I want it both textured slightly on the nail um, and I want that to remain shiny whilst the rest of my nail is going to remain there. So now they've all cured, I'm going to pop a matte top coat over that and then grab a brush. I'm going to grab a fine liner brush for that design to paint over the top. So that's just in there curing. So in salon, if you were doing, say, a design like this um, for a gel polish, it should only take about 45 minutes because really when you put it all together, there's not a great deal. The foil takes seconds just to stick it on. Um, the dots take seconds and the stamping actually doesn't take long either. So it's it's a really easy, simple one. I suppose the, the longest bit is going to be this little hand painted bit and depending how much you want to hand paint, you could easily still wear this set without that. So I'm hoping I'm still in shot for you guys. I'm just gonna actually thin out what's on my brush. I'll join these up after. So you just placing and letting the brush sort of give them their shape for the moment. And then we'll do one on the end. Now I'm just going to wipe off the excess off my brush and I'm going to come in and just sweep these down towards the stem. And I'll do the same. If I want a point on the end, I'll do the same. Turn that around. If it were my client's hand, I'd go over the top. But if I do that, I don't want to get in the way of the camera. So there's that. And now that is going to pop in the lamp. For this particular brand, that's a 90 second cure. Um, so that's going to go in my lamp for the 90 seconds. So that's my third and final abstract, quick and easy salon autumn art. Um, and there we go, there is how I would team these nails up as part of a nail look. Um, these will be up on my Instagram for you guys if you want to see a close up image of them. There. In fact, this one's actually already on my Instagram. You can find me on Instagram um, and Facebook actually as Naily Kaylee. Um, Instagram's probably the easiest one to find me on. Um, so that's just finishing curing and then I'll pop that out that you can see the three looks that we've created. There we go, that'll do. There we go, so there's three, one's facing the wrong way. Nail up looks for you. Um, so if you've got any questions, Eve can let me know now. Absolutely, um, thank you. Ah, you are there. <laughs> yeah, I've come back. I felt That's like I was talking to myself, you. really. <laughs> they look they look gorgeous. I don't know whether you can just zoom in and just do a quick, or, or hold them up one by yeah, one. Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to hold them. Um, they look gorgeous. I don't know how to zoom in my phone on this, you see. So, right. In fact, if I pop them back a little bit on there. So there's the ones. How's that? Can you see those? Yeah. So that's the full sets that I done prior to this. So the ones I've just done as we're speaking are there. 
I don't know how the light hits on those. So you can see the shine on that. Beautiful. So I hope everybody yeah, could see yeah, that clearly. That's lovely. It's just kind of see particularly in that one with the face with the stamping is beautiful. Well, I think that's the nice thing about stamping is that you can get that level of fine detail. I'm not sure I would have been able to paint that on a live. I'd have been shaking far too much to get that remotely like that. So having it um, stamped just makes life easy, particularly in salon when you are in a hurry and someone brings in a Picasso they want you to knock out in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. No, they're great. And I think those there's great to have three different designs and some really good inspiration. As you said, all relatively quick to do in salon, so really good, but look really impressive and detailed. So thank you so much. And we have had a question here in Zoom, which is actually about your palette. <laughs> it, there's a lovely design, but um, can you tell us about your palette? Did you make it or ah, where did you I did. So in lockdown, I got a little bit bored, as did we all, and I was a little bit bored of just doing nails, dare I say it, um, or not doing nails as it was. So this is made with um, pigments and glitters out of my nail art box. There's actually a little bit of crystal pixie in the middle. Um, can't even remember what pigments are in there. And it, it's encapsulated in resin. Resin, however, if you do have a go at making, there are loads of tutorials on um, YouTube and things, which I probably shouldn't say to go and do that, but that's, that is where I learn. But what they don't tell you on them that is really important is if you do have a go at making your own, um, you do need a lot of PPE with resin because it is quite dangerous to use if you're not using it. So you need respirators and gloves and things. But yeah, I made this myself really easily. Um, and I love it. And I probably will have a go at making some more. Um, but I do have a colleague that actually makes these. She's if you if, they, if you follow her on Instagram, her name's Tips and Flicks, and she makes them to sell. So she actually makes better quality than I do. Um, <laughs> but she's got some beautiful designs on there, and if you message her, she'll be able to advise me if you don't want to go down the route of making yourself. Excellent. Fab. Okay, brilliant. Um, I think that's probably we're coming up to time, but thank you so much, Kaylee. They're amazing designs. And um, like like Kaylee said, if you want to kind of see a bit more detail, do go and follow her on Instagram, Fab account, loads of beautiful nail art on there. But um, yeah, that's it. So thank you so much, Kaylee. That's been really, really interesting today. And thanks everyone for joining us. And um, thank you very much. <laughs> do have a look over on our um, website page professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash webinars for the other sessions we've got coming up but for now thank you very much Kayleigh Cairns thank you bye <laughs>